Florida is a way of life, and Florida to many is synonymous with fun, but let's not forget, as we look at the Sunshine State, that her most extensive industry is agriculture, and her most famous export, citrus fruit, backbone of her economy. A menace is lurking. Researchers with the Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences will soon conduct a study to analyze the economic impact of agriculture on South Florida. Florida and oranges have always been synonymous. Did you have your glass of Florida orange juice this morning? This single state produces more oranges than any country in the world. Silent but destructive force. Tree-killing bacteria is wiping out the state's famous orange groves. 90% are infected and next year's orange harvest could be one of the lowest on record. Florida is young, exuberant, still growing and bursting with the vitamins of optimism and fresh ideas. Florida, orange blossom of the South. I'm a farmer, specifically a citrus grower, but in former lives I've done all kinds of farming, grew vegetables and landscape, trees and so on. On my mother's side of the family for three generations. Excuse me, I'm gonna back up. Four generations on my mother's side, three generations on my father's side have been in citrus business. Sorry, go ahead. See, I told you you had a lot to edit. <laughs> I was when President Kennedy was killed and I remember where I was when I found the first greening tree in my grove. The greening disease has reduced the uh, productivity of trees and if they're not well maintained that tree dies. Um, so the impact has just been a slow insidious reduction in yield. Um, it's been um, it, it's also robbed us of our future because when you plant a young tree in a grove, unless you go to extraordinary measures to protect that from psyllids, it gets the disease and never reaches a productive age. You know, growers are very dis discouraged because there's just no future at this point. We have hope in, in scientific research that will cure the disease, but until those cures uh, uh, come about in such, you know, such a way we can apply them in the field. There's no future, no outlook, for, no bright outlook. We're a grower trade organization with about 6,000 members. Uh, my title is Director of Communications, so I handle all internal and external communications, our website, our newsletter, as well as media relations. Our primary jobs are lobbying for citrus growers in Tallahassee, our state capital, as well as Washington, D.C. Um, agriculture faces a lot of different issues from a regulatory standpoint, from a research standpoint. So we're, we're out there on the front lines making sure that our elected officials uh, understand our issues. Right now the biggest challenge is a disease known as HLB or citrus greening. Um, it's endemic to the state of Florida. Uh, it's cost us several billion dollars in economic activity as well as about 14,000 jobs. So it is a challenge and growers right now are figuring out different production techniques on how to deal with the disease. It's spread by a little bug called the Asian citrus psyllid. Um, and when 
that psyllid uh, is infected and it feeds on the tree, um, it affects the tree's vascular system, so the tree can't uptake nutrients properly. Uh, greening is actually a slang name for the bacteria. It's officially known as Humlung Bong disease because it was discovered first in China. And that is roughly translated into green dragon. Green dragon is uh, the shape that a stressed portion of a tree uh, often has um, when it's first showing its first signs of greening disease. And, uh, you know, in the groves today, I can, I can see uh, that particular section of a tree that is really suffering from greening tends to, you know, have a, a, a little bit of a green dragon look. The theory is that it came through the port of Miami most likely from Brazil. It was found in Brazil, which has a big citrus producing area uh, in the Sao Paulo state. Um, but if you look at the uh, map of the spread of the disease, it comes from, from South Florida northward. As we continue to trade, it's important to, to make sure that we keep other diseases out because right now there are other diseases that Brazil has citrus wise that we don't have. These are all very, very damaging citrus diseases that we need to keep out, and unfortunately, we didn't keep HLB out. It's spread as far as it can spread. We, we pretty much assume we have a 100% infection rate in the grove, so um, right now, we're not necessarily trying to prevent the spread of the disease, but rather keep the trees that have the disease yields up so they're still at an, a good economic play for the growers. This grove was um, an excellent production, excellent investment for us. Until 2012, we actually managed to continue to be profitable in the early signs of greening. But all that changed in 2013 and 14 when we were finally overwhelmed by that. And despite doing all the production, horticultural things we knew to do, we have lost that fight. As a result of that, um, we're, we're selling our property. We're selling this grove land. It will go for development, I'm sure. We're not trying to eradicate the disease or prevent its spread, but what we're trying to do is learn how to live with it and, and keep trees producing oranges at a rate that's still economically viable. Anyone who um, knows a state legislator or, or a, um, uh, a U.S. senator or representative in the state and has an opportunity to talk to them needs to express that citizens are concerned about the future of Florida citrus. Both our state legislature and our, and our U.S. Congress has been very supportive. Um, when you think about the U.S. Congress, they're looking at not only the economies of Florida, but they're looking at the economies of California and Texas and Arizona that uh, have vital interest in their citrus industry being maintained. At a more personal, everyday level, anytime they're around people and oranges come up or orange juice is served at the table, is a good opportunity for them to say to their friends and neighbors, you realize that citrus in Florida and citrus around the world is in trouble. It's simple, eight ounces a day, 365 days a year, every man, woman, and child in the United States, and that would certainly benefit our bottom line and allow us to afford the cost of growing citrus now.